So how do we catch these then? So just walk along the shoreline and they're usually sitting right next to shore or on the shore right. and they'll hop in the water and then you just want to scoop them up. Go on froggies. Here yeah, froggy, froggy, froggy. <laughs> you get it? No. <laughs> Come on froggies. You know you want to. Hang on. Did you get him? You get yeah, him? I think so, yeah. Excellent. Oh, here we go. Have you got him? Yeah, I got him. All right. Great. Ah, oh, so that, oh, he's got a yellow belly. Yeah. Oh, very yellow. Ah, oh, big belly too. Does he smell like garlic? No, are they meant to do? probably a female. Oh, really? Yeah. So the male smell of garlic? Yeah, during the breeding season especially. Performing surgery on a frog in the cold and blustery heights of the Sierra Nevada is not easy. So I'll just grab him by his hind legs here. Yeah, don't lose him. So I just want to grab him by the hind Oi. legs like that. Whoa! Oh, right, okay. Oh, he's got a funny shape, hasn't he? Yeah. Okay. The frog skin is not attached to its body along its back, so making a cut in the skin is not as painful or as harmful as it appears. Perfect. Sorry. All right. <laughs> we both apologise to the frog at the yeah. same time. Yes, Drop your pit tag into there. It's for a good course. And then your cut is right Just in there. there. Yeah, see. Perfect cut. Slide the pit tag inserter right into that small incision. That's fine. And make sure you're going right into the skin yeah. and not into the muscle. Perfect. There we go. Oh, yeah. Right to there, okay. In goes the pit tag. Now we want to move that pit tag up over the sacral hump. God, Isn't that amazing how their skin's not really attached to anywhere? It Anything, just slides yeah. around. And you can see how nice and loose oh, that skin is. Yeah. There we go. There you go. Okay. So now it's we want to run the pit tag over him, pit tag reader over him. And let pull let the button up. There, there we, we go. go. There we go. Two, two, five, four, zero. Okay, so we'll get the legs wet so that the transmitter rolls really easily over the legs. Uh-huh. And then you're gonna want to slide uh-huh. the antenna over its leg. When I saw that antenna, I wouldn't have believed that you could have fit Ooh, yeah. that round his waist. It's... Yep, and then just spin it so it's on top of the animal. And there's the pit tag oh, there. Okay. Yep, there He's fully wired up now. For yep, second. he is ready to go. Ready to so go. So someone want to turn the, the radio on? A little power, there we go. There's the signal. That's good and set. Oh. Yeah. Where are you, frog? Oh, <laughs> that's pretty <laughs> that's good. That's him. Yeah. So how many uh, are you planning to radio transmit like this? Ten. Ten. Yeah. Mm. Awesome. This is a really aquatic frog. It spends almost all its time right along the lake shore or stream shore. Mm. Oh, fantastic. And uh, that makes it easy for us to track them. Brilliant. We know that they don't head off across the rocks and disappear down. Disappear. Yeah. The batteries can last up to 30 days before he has to remove the transmitter giving Roland plenty of time to check whether the frog stays in its new home. Yep. Oh, there we go. There we go, little froggy go. And he's... Go. Go. That go. was not a very elegant prop at all, was it? No, they're not real elegant. <laughs> First indications are that the frogs are happy to stay put. If it's successful, Roland can soon begin to put the legs back to how they should be and restock Yosemite with a mountain yellow-legged frog 